Anchorage caucus had uh, uh, nearly a couple dozen uh, Anchorage legislators met at the new LIO building at Minnesota and Benson. Very positive feedback. Uh, we had a, a couple hundred folks and uh, it's, it's always engaging to have uh, good participation from the community and good access. Uh, it's something we do miss uh, in, in Juneau, but uh, uh, it, it went very well. Good, uh, good commentary and, and great suggestions. And I think, uh, you know, even though we're accessible here, it's, it's, uh, it's very nice to have that kind of uh, uh, feedback. We had uh, also serve on uh, uh, resources, labor and commerce and affairs, and uh, we've been dealing with House Bill 111. We had public testimony last night, had a, a very good turnout, significant opposition. I mean, people are looking at House Bill 111 as, as basically a job-killing uh, effort. Uh, had good testimony from the uh, the Teamsters as far as the the concerns they have about about uh, you know dramatically increasing the tax structure on the on the oil industry, which is paying the bulk of our our revenues right now. So, uh, uh, good session so far. Great public engagement, and appreciate the opportunity to be here this morning. Representative Pritt. Yeah, thank you, uh, Minority Leader. Uh, this has been, uh, it's actually been a great week for, for me because this week I had the opportunity to be a part of uh, uh, an incredible team that stood strong together. Uh, I, was, I had to step out for a little bit and we didn't skip a beat. Uh, Representative Newman stepped in and the, uh, this Republican group here uh, went, just went to work defending our constituents' uh, needs, con defending what our constituents want. And our constituents wanted from us, they want to reduce the size of government. Now, I don't know if you've seen the, the, the numbers on the current budget. There's an increase not only from what the governor off offered, but there's an increase from last year. That was not what uh, I think our constituents sent us back down here to do this year. I think they wanted us to continue to, to look at government and try to find the ways and the mechanisms in which we can reduce the size of government. And uh, you will see in the next uh, week, week and a half, as the budget goes through finance and then through the floor, that the uh, uh, Republican caucus will be offering op opportunities to reduce the size of government. Now, we, we tried to be a part of that in the subcommittee process, but at times we were told that we couldn't participate, that, we, that if, we were, if we offered anything, they'd be ruled out of order, or they just weren't really analyzed. And, and, and from early on, there was a, a kind of a pushing to the side. And so our members uh, have uh, been working together, and we are going to continue over this next week. It's going to be really busy for us, because we are, uh, we've got some, some, uh, some great, thoughtful, ideas on how to accomplish what the people sent us here to do, and that is to control the size of government. And the last thing that I'll highlight before um, uh, passing it back to uh, Representative Millette is that what you've also seen in the last couple of days is a usurpation of the process and an attempt to uh, get over 300,000 people's voices quieted by t removing the uh, substantial amount of the earnings reserve and putting it into a, a place where there was no longer a need for the CBR. That was an attempt to quiet a good portion of this state by quieting the representatives, the 18 members that are part of this majority. And um, some people have said, well, how is that any different than what you guys proposed two years ago? And I want to make it very clear on how that's completely different than what we did. Two years ago, we were at a point where we were about to offer, have to, the governor was going to have to send out pink slips. We were trying to create stability in state government. We were trying to put, create a position where we weren't looking at, the, at, at the, creating uncertainty amongst the people that work for the state and a drop in morale. And we had been working for months on trying to come to a conclusion to, to uh, be able to utilize and include our minority at the time in the solution to be able to use the CBR. This year, by coming out 45 days in, before 45 days, and saying, we don't even want you to be a part of the conversation, that is a substantial, substantial change from how that was handled several years ago. We wanted participation, and it wasn't until we saw that there was not the movement to try to work with us that we started to try to find out how can we ensure that we create st that stability amongst our state workers, stability uh, in terms of the budgeting. And so this has been, a, this has been a, a, a dramatic shift, and I hope Alaskans recognize that the attempt to run around uh, the majority of their representatives back here, and, it, and it's not going to happen. 
it's, it's just not going to happen. So with that. Thank you, Representative Pruitt. Um, Mallory Walser will walk around with the microphone. If you could just state your name and affiliation, we'd be happy to take your questions this morning. Morning, Liz Rains with KTVA. As you mentioned, the majority has um, voted to fund the budget without using the constitutional budget reserve, which means they don't have to work with the minority for votes there. How will you as a minority stay relevant in the budget discussion? Um, thanks, Liz, for the question. Jennifer, you want to talk about how you are plan to be relevant? <laughs> well, you know, actually, um, I think in the discussion of what they've done is how you plan to be, I plan to be relevant. As a new person here, um, you know, legislature, legislative process is both a combination of politics and policy. And I've always approved politics when it's driving a policy or it's, it's facilitating a policy. The policy with the CBR, as you know, is savings are very valuable. So in order to get into that savings, you have to have a supermajority to get to it. What I feel this, the Democrats basically did is they use politics not to promote policy, but to get around policy. And I feel that's a really relevant discussion that we need to have here in this building, because I think that's, that's not a really pretty lipstick for politics. Representative Birch? Yes, I, I, it's a good question. And I think uh, the, the relevance is going to come from, from the public. It's going to come from each and every uh, uh, resident of this state who weighs in with their legislature and, 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 and answers the question whether they approve of a policy or the practice of imposing an income tax on hardworking Alaskans, of, of taking money out of the earnings reserve. I mean, Governor Walker just a year ago said that a $4 billion draw on the earnings reserve account would cost $200 million a year in lost revenue because the earnings reserve, if you well, is a, a high uh, earning account. It's about, I, I, it was uh, an 18 to 20 percent rate of return versus the constitutional budget reserve, which is about a, you know, it's like your savings account, like zero, you know, to, to you know, zero to one percent. It's just uh, a much lower return. And that's traditionally where those dollars would come from. So I think we're going to be relying on the public. Unfortunately, there's a four billion dollar budget amendment that happened yesterday uh, in House Finance with a very close uh, uh, House uh, Democratic majority voted to, to put $4 billion into the budget. Uh, the minority was outvoted on that. The, the Republican caucus was outvoted on that. And so we're going to be relying on the public. They're expecting to have testimony today on a budget uh, amendment that was made yesterday. So the, it's going to be up to the public. It's going to be up to you and the media to actually get the message out that what we're talking about is job killing increases in oil taxes. We're talking about income taxes. We're talking about a very significant impact on every Alaskan. And I think what we need to do is, is basically get the message out. It was, it was getting out very well in Anchorage when we have people that can actually come in and talk to us on a, on a you know, nose to nose, if you will. But uh, here in Juneau, with the, you know, with the LIO, they're going to have to participate. And we're going to be relying on the media to get that message out. Representative Pruitt. So um, I don't know. I'm going to go back a ways, go back to high school. I had friends. And <coughs> sometimes if you forget that people have friends and you mess with someone, then it comes back later and it really hurts. And we got friends over on the Senate. There's a whole other body that this has got to go through. I got friends back home and our constituents and they're talking. And so, you know, it may seem like a win right now, but um, it always comes back on you. And so this was kind of a dangerous move, I think. And relying on one person to manipulate your whole caucus, and that's exactly what happened. You know, you can tell when you've got a subcommittee of one person, which is exactly what we heard yesterday from Representative Seaton. He said that he was the chairman of the language subcommittee. Come on, be honest. Then you're the only person making the decisions on this stuff. To try to hide something like that, that's deceptive. That's just flat out deceptive. But that being said, the whole caucus is resting on that one person. I don't know if that's the kind of friends that I would want. The good thing is I've got some great friends and they're on the other side. And they're back, uh, they're back home. And so I expect the public and, our, and the, the Senate to help us in this discussion. Representative Newman? Liz, we'll, we'll continue to be relevant by bringing the issues forward that we feel are important. But I, I think that, you know, there's one thing that I say every day in this building that's our differences, that are, that's our strength, you know. And I think that by 
stifling the voice of the, the minority in the House is a bad decision. Last year, I know that the House majority uh, was very conscientious about the feelings of everybody. We, we wanted to make sure that all members felt treated fairly, and that was very important.